welcome back to In the Lab with Jennifer and my special co-host, Jill Lamoureux. Hello, Jill. Hello, everyone. And our special guest today, Matt Ellis. How are we doing, Matt? Doing good over here. Good. So we are going to spend probably an hour talking about concentrates and extraction. Um, probably going to call this show uh, 101, Concentrates 101, Extraction 101, something like that. That uh, Because so many people um, inside and outside the industry know nothing about concentrates. So I wanted to talk to the best, and that's Matt Ellis. He um, started basically in the industry, right, with Organolabs? Yep, yep. I founded Organolabs uh, with... Uh with Ralph Morgan at, uh, um, what's the name? Uh, Ralph. Ralph. I Kay. can't remember the name of the dispensary now. Oh, Evergreen Apothecary. There we carry. go. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Slip my mind. <laughs> Look at that. And you developed the pressed pill, and it was the first in the industry, correct? The first and the last. I haven't seen somebody else make one yet. I haven't either. Have you? Uh, and in, in, Col- in California, California, too. Yeah. Really? I've not seen anybody do it. I've seen a lot of people make gel caps and stuff like that, but nobody has pressed a pill yet. Jill, have you seen any other press pills? No. Probably because it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't very easy at all. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, that's how I know Matt. And not only uh, did Matt start with that in CO2, but has done a ton of different extractions, including butane, propane, ethanol, um, you name it, he's done it all. And so uh, my point, uh, or the most important thing here is to discuss the differences in the extraction methods, pros and cons, and uh, maybe help some people that uh, do some extractions for maybe somebody in their family that's sick. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. And then any other things that we want to learn about uh, extraction. So why don't you, yeah, start with, um, you know, finding Organolabs and how you've moved on from there. All right. So uh, at Organolabs, we decided to, uh, we wanted to do CO2. Um, I originally started blowing cans, just like everybody else did. What's blowing cans? Uh, sorry. The, uh, <laughs> using a, uh, preferably a uh, stainless steel or glass tube uh, to load product into and to take a can of butane that you find from the hardware store or, or the head shop and turning it upside down and allowing that fluid to go uh, extract the oil out. Ew. Uh, it's, yeah, it's very dangerous, very dangerous. So you start, so that's basically where people start, right? Which is... Correct. A lot of people start that way. I mean, I did a lot of research and understanding. I mean, the first first extraction I've ever done was ethanol. It's by far the easiest one. I mean, you just take it, you soak it in Everclear, and you uh, you can either do it cold or do it hot. Um, cold takes about 30 days. Hot takes, uh, you can do it in a day. Oh, okay. Uh, so you take the flour or trim or whatever. Correct. Let's just say and put it in a crock pot and then put... Crock it- pot or a mason jar or... Okay. You know, it depends on uh, if you're going to... I mean, some people do it via... In, in the heat in the sun, or you can do it on a crock pot. I mean, Phoenix Tears, uh, they use ethanol or hexane. No, oh, I thought they thought did naphtha. Naphtha, that's what yeah. it was. Naphtha or ethanol uh, in a crock pot and just let it cook. Um, so th- so basically that extracts the cannabinoids, right? Correct. So when do you know when that's done? Um, the material itself is pretty bleached. So but ethanol is... It pulls everything, so it's really nasty, dark oil. So okay, so the color, the color is really, you know, really dark. The, okay, yes. uh, and it doesn't taste that great, even when you get all the ethanol out because it's got so much biomass left. Okay. So you move up from there, and so I moved up to um, butane, okay. and uh, which actually, I was using Vector, and Vector is actually a mixed gas. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, Vector is not just pure butane; it's butane, uh, isobutane, and propane. Okay, and that's in the cans again from correct, the hardware the store that you shouldn't be using. Correct, that's but correct. that's what you start. Okay, okay. But everybody's got to start somewhere. Sure. So, sure. doing small batches, and then uh, I met uh, I met my partners, and we started Organa Labs, and we decided that doing uh, large scale extractions with explosive gases wasn't the best for us. Okay. Uh, and you know that was two and a half years ago. I've learned a lot since then. Um, 
So we did uh, we did CO2. We spent okay. uh, quite a bit of money on an, on an Eden Labs CO2 extractor. It was a five liter high pressure. And so high pressure is 5,000 PSI. Okay. And so I ran tests from 800 PSI to 5,000 PSI on different materials. Uh, and that's not super critical, right? Uh, super critical is above 1,200 PSI. It's actually oh. 11 something. Okay. Okay. So, so you did both non <laughs> and super. Okay. Correct. So subcritical and super critical. Supercritical. That's right. Okay. Um, and I found that subcritical actually had a better product. And so I was running between 800 and 1,000 PSI at about 60 degrees. And so that extraction process took a long time, though. I know. I was with you during the whole thing <laughs> while, while you were testing everything. Why, why do you think that um, subcritical ended up with a better product? Um, basically, what happens is the heat and the pressure um, cause the, uh, the, uh, uh, the moisture in the product to... It's, it's not really rancid, but it, it changes it. So it just makes a, it's, I mean, it's a decent product as far as potency, but as far as taste, it really isn't that great. So probably not good for smoking or edibles. Uh, well, you can actually clean it. You can do some uh Well, some like, we're getting into there. You're, you're getting ahead of yourself. Okay? <laughs> so it works good for edibles. Did that make sense to you though? Yes. The subcritical versus super. Okay. And then how did you come up with the press pill idea? I mean, um, because nobody else did it. Yeah. I mean, and so I wanted to, there's two things I've learned. You either got to do, you've got to do it cheaper than everybody else, or you got to do something that nobody else has done in order to make it. In Colorado, for sure, with all the regulation. Correct. No question. Yeah. Yeah, in most industries, too, though. You either got to do it better, or you got to do something that nobody else can do. And that way yeah. it gives you a corner on the market. Okay, so that's strictly how you picked press pills. Plus, they're medicinal. Correct. They're medicinal. Plus, you did great doses so you could take just one or you could take several correct and that was the it, like phoenix tears it talks about taking a grain of sand i mean a uh, half a grain of rice so it's hard to determine what that is and especially if there's different consistencies i mean the oil could have been 50 percent or the oil could have been 80 percent. so a half a grain of rice is not really a consistent dose right so by using uh the tablets and, and measuring each one of them out and making sure they were correct it did give people more of a dose got it okay so, and um, I remember back, you had a hard time. Did you have a hard time getting the the pressed pill apparatus? I no, actually, hearing... um, believe it or not, uh, it was actually easier than I thought. Was uh, it? Yeah, you just had to, you had to. I pulled one in from China. Yeah, but you're like a miracle man <laughs> with ordering things. If anyone needs anything ordered, call Matt Ellis. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but with that being said, though, the first one broke. <laughs> okay. Well, that's made in China. Hello. And you can't send it back to China, we found out. So uh, they did give us a deal on the second one, and it lasted for a while. That's good. Uh, okay. and, then we, and then we bought the third one from uh, from Pfizer, actually. It was a used pill press that Pfizer had. It was uh, Old Riva. Huh. Um, yeah. And so they, I, they, they were fine selling um, it and everything? I actually had to sign an, uh, an FDA waiver, um, which... I had no issues doing. I mean, right. the fact that, I mean, one of the biggest issues with pill presses is the excess industry. I mean, that's oh, what right, you've got to, right. you know, if, if it's not, you know, that right. there's not a lot of people making press pills. Right. You can make candies. That was another thing that somebody did do um, or tried to do. They were making uh, the, a large candy, if you will. Um, oh, the mint thing? Yes, and I cannot remember the Actually, name. Actually, Dixie has, uh, Dixie took on that line and revamped it. Did they? Yes, they did. Okay. And that's great, yeah. Does it taste better? Tastes way better. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was one of the yeah. issues with, with right. our can of tabs. Our can of tabs weren't terrible, but so CO2's got a, a spiciness to it. And For I have sure. not determined what the, how that happens yet. Um, oh. I know that, you know, crap in, crap out. So... Back in the day when we started, we didn't have a whole lot of choices on trim. We weren't, right. you know, you, our, our grow at that time, I mean, that was like a day's worth of run. So, you know, we had to get a lot from other places. So it basically, it, it, it's not, um, if you do strain specific, uh, I've said there's Evo Labs here in Colorado. They've done really well with making really good flavorful CO2. Oh, really? Yeah. I haven't tried any of theirs, but I know they, they have tested with us and everything like that. Um, but let's, let's go back to, you said happen all day. So let's talk about, um, cause I know one of the, um, cons or at least back then with CO2 was lower yield 
and a longer time to to correct. run it, correct? Yes. And um, that's, okay. Basically, the time average right now is about two hours per pound. So that's, uh, with a five liter machine, you can run two pounds. With a 20 liter machine, you can run eight pounds. So In two hours? No, no, no. That's oh. two hours per pound. Per pound. So that'd oh, be okay. 16 hours on eight pounds. Okay, right. And then about a it, two. To, no, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's about a ramp up time of about 45 minutes to an hour, uh, because you've got to get the the way the gas work or the machine works is the gas cycles through, and so you've got to get it to compress so that it's liquid, and so it takes oh, a while for that. Okay. It takes you know 35, 30 minutes, 45 minutes to get that gas to turn get to in the right phase. I mean, that's that's the, basically as it's going through the machine because it recycles. Okay. Um, as it goes through the machine. It's got to get that harmonious balance where it's compressing at this point and then it's turning to gas at this point and so on and so forth. Okay. So it's, okay. There's, a, there's a good ramp up time. That makes um, sense. Whereas butane? With butane, uh, it's actually a very efficient solvent. Uh, well, it's actually too efficient. So to get back to the cans of having mixed gas. Okay. So everybody, once we got extractors, they wanted to run just butane. And so butane is highly polar. It's so polar that it'll pull chlorophyll and other biomass material that you don't want. So through all my uh, extractions and all my research and testing, butane's by far the worst solvent that I've found because it's so, it's, it pulls everything. It's worse, it's, it's about the same as ethanol. But the reason people like it is because it pulls more cannabinoids, right? Building more potency. Well, correct. But but a mixed gas actually works better. So if you right, the mixture, which is what you're saying. proper okay. mixture, uh, butane, propane, isobutane, uh, it actually will allow you to saturate the material longer, and so that way you can pull all of the cannabinoids out. Okay, but but previous so if you're saying that most people started with a can which is a mixture of propane and butane why did they just go straight to butane is because they saw that it was you know better uh, it's pure and you can't buy in a tank a combination of two or can you you can oh you can mm -hmm. so why would they go back to only butane because they, didn't they don't know. know okay um and, and, and you can give ahead. higher yields uh, oh, much higher yields. I mean, I uh, in my waste, and time. yeah in my waste material, uh, I've got less than a percent left. Um, so I know that I get all the cannabinoids out without pulling the chlorophyll too. So the mixed gas does a higher yield, or the b straight butane does higher yield. Uh, mixed gas does a higher. Yield. Well, they both will do higher yields when you soak them, but uh, butane will pull on more stuff that you don't want. And so, propane doesn't. So the good mixture of the two is correct. The best. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm just thinking one of the reasons that people might do it is if they get a bigger yield regardless of quality. No. So, but, yeah. the, but, the, but the problem is, is everybody's using butane to make wax. And then with that, they're just flushing it through. So they've got a lot of uh, cannabinoids left in the material because they're not letting it soak for very long. Yeah, which is I know of another problem is they, you know, they – just like people rip the plant and don't leave it cure enough, same thing for extraction. They yep. don't let it evolve, correct? Correct. So I want to touch on something real quick. Yeah. Now, the butane and the propane that we're talking about is bought from a gas store. It's not bought okay, from Okay, I was going to get to there. So we went from cans to an actual gas store, or is there an in-between in purity of butane? Um, well, there's multiple levels of purity of butane and propane. But you have to go from a can to a gas store. Correct. Okay. So, again, people start with the cans that are absolutely not good in a hardware store to now we call air gas or another gas store, and we're using a, 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 a pure, if you will, butane. Correct. Propane. Okay. So, and what does that look like, that scale of purity, and what does that mean? Well, so there's multiple, multiple levels of purity. Actually, um, you know what? We're about to uh, cut to break. Okay. So on that thought, um, listen to some of my great sponsors and we'll be back. Counterpunch is a delicious and effective medical marijuana beverage proudly made right here in Colorado. 
Each bottle is freshly infused with 100% pure flower extract from the highest grade marijuana plants available today. Using proprietary extraction methods, every bottle of Canapunch is consistently and reliably infused with an exact milligram dosage that you can count on to relieve your symptoms each and every time. Canapunch is delicious. There's never any medicine-y taste. We use only 100% cannabis flowers. No trim or byproducts are ever used in Canapunch. It does not require refrigeration and comes in convenient, resealable, multi-dose bottles from 60 milligrams to 200 milligrams we have drinks with dosage that works best for you can of punch is available in a variety of delicious flavors like black cherry watermelon pineapple mango and blue raspberry and we now have strain specific beverages available just for you can of punch is delicious convenient consistent and effective give it a try and experience the can of punch difference tired of dispensary hopping Trying to find quality meds? Look no further and get to know Greenworks. Our shops are stocked with over 20 strains of organically grown meds, including R4, the highest testing CBD strain in Colorado. Yes, we back up our quality with testing. While Greenworks offers only the highest quality meds, we don't believe in high prices, with eighths ranging from $20 to $40 and ounces capped at $175. With two centers in Denver and one in Glenwood Springs, we're likely closer than you think. Call 303-647-5210 to find the location nearest you. The Chocolatiers at Incredibles are dedicated to crafting the finest chocolate from high-quality ingredients to ensure the greatest possible medicated edibles in the world. Consistency and quality are top priority. Lab testing on each and every batch. Rick and Josh have been making non-medicated chocolates for years for such retail outlets as Whole Foods and Vitamin Cottage. Today, we are focused on crafting our award-winning medicated incredible chocolate bars. We are professional bakers and we believe food should be made from scratch. We guarantee your satisfaction. Have an incredible day. I'm Gary Johnson and you're listening to iCannabis Radio and I want to say talk it up Colorado. All right so sorry about cutting you off Matt but I wanted you to to get it all in but we're talking about the different purities in butane like when you go to air gas or whatever. Gotcha. Um, so there's Air gas has actually got four. I mean, there's other more, more levels, but we'll talk about what air gas has got. Okay. Uh, you have CP grade, which is chemically pure, which is 99.95% pure. All right. And so from that, you have um, in, uh, instrument grade, which is 99.99. And then you have ultra purity, which is nine, it was three nines. And I can't remember the other one off the top okay. of my head. Now, what the difference... They're all the same gas. This is another thing that people don't understand. So all four grades are okay. the exact same gas, except for they test the bottle for impurities. So now impurities, you think, well, heavy metals, stuff like that. That's not what they're testing for. They're testing for moisture, oxygen, nitrogen. Uh, they're just testing huh. for uh, – the higher-end gases work with equipment, which you know. Right, so, exactly. So I was the, just going to say that. Yeah. The equipment with the GC and the HPLC. Mm-hmm. That carrier gas can't have any residuals or other contaminants in it, even small particles of nitrogen or, you know, moisture or, you know, air, uh, because it'll, it'll mess with the detectors. So they test the bottles to make sure that it doesn't have any impurities of that such in it. Okay, so let me get this straight. Then why is it bad to blow a can and not use pure butane? Okay, so a, a can. <laughs> right? Okay, so now Vector is... Vector, is, the can. Is, Okay. Triple refi- or quad for f- filtered. Okay, so okay. the gas in it is clean, and so is power and such like that. But what happens is in a can you have machine oils. Okay, so you've got to remember the cans are used for lighters, and so the lighter oh. has to be lubricated when it, when you put it in there. Okay, and so the machine oils um, can get into your product. And right now I don't know what 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 issues that would right. come up. Right, but which we'll talk about. It just right. doesn't sound like it'd be fun. Got it. Okay. Oil in your product. Bad oil. Bad oil in your product. Great. (laughs) So in the in the uh, the uh, from air gas, they take all of that out. Correct. There there is there. there. It's it's the pure gas. Pure Um, gas. Okay. And there's no uh, there's no oils or contaminants of that such. I mean, there may be if you use uh, chemically pure grade, which is what I use. um, You know, there may be a little bit of nitrogen, a little bit of oxygen. I mean, but it never really, uh, it's never caused an effect in any of the extractions I've done. Right. Um, one more thing, the uh, the the cans. Um, you also got to remember the cans are probably stamped out in some third world country uh, that really don't have clean standards. So yeah. dust, debris, foreign Anything, particles, right. rust, uh, heavy metal shavings. I mean, there's a lot that can be in there. And if you take a can 
and you push it like this, you get a gas. So you're not going to get that because it's not going to come out in the gas. However, but when you turn that upside down and you and you push that into a tube, all the stuff's going to come out with the liquid. Oh, now I know. Did you you knew that, huh? Yeah, I did not know that. Well, now I know. I that's, did not know that. That that's pretty scary. Um, Correct. Well, back to the pure gases. So yes, so with uh, high performance liquid chromatography. Um, it's liquid as a carrier gas chromatography is gas. And, um, I just got my new instrumentation, which is a GC and, uh, the FID, the detector takes hydrogen. So -hmm. that's gotta be a pure gas. Then I also have a tank of helium for the headspace and, and ultra pure air. I had to get a tank of that as well because again, yeah, it clogs. It actually is bad for the, not only the column, but also the detector, and you definitely want to preserve, preserve those because they're very expensive. So like you said, you had to get a tank of clean air. So I mean, Clean it, air. Yeah. <laughs> Just air. Just like air. I want to pay for that, but yeah. <laughs> clean air. And then I all, for the LC, we have to have instrument-grade ga- methanol and stuff like that. Same Correct. thing with the liquids. Yeah, right. so it just tests for residuals and, and making sure that it's as pure as you can get it. Right. And so that's... That you, makes a lot of sense. And so when you do extractions, you want to make sure, you know, the, the butane and, and isobutane and propane are not bad. They're actually on the FDA lists of uh, the GARS list, which is uh, generally recognized as safe. Oh. Uh, and it's found in a lot of products. It's found right. in... Um, it's, uh, propane's used a lot for aerosols, uh, PAM cooking spray and such. Right. And it's a gas. It, it goes away. I mean, it, it just, it doesn't, it's not harmful. Um, you know, I, I guess in large doses, okay, it's harmful. Okay, hold on a second. If you sprayed some right now and I lit up a cigarette, that would be harmful. Well, not correct. But I'm talking about <laughs> as far as ingesting. Right. No, I get it. So I get it. Okay. There's, there, there's, no, there's no harm in ingestion. I mean, and, and the point when you ingest, it's very small anyway. Um, but if look at propane. Propane's volatility is at negative 40 degrees F. So what does that mean? That's very cold. So basically at negative 40 is when it turns from a liquid to a gas. So like uh, right now, um, let's see, boiling water is at 215. So at 215 degrees F Fahrenheit, water turns from a liquid to a gas. Right. Okay. So it's negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit that propane Hmm. turns from a liquid to a gas. Got it. So you it, basically, if it was sitting here, it'd be a gas, it'd be volatile. So you can't, um, you, you're not gonna, it's not gonna stay where it's at for very long if it's in something because it's volatile right. at room temperature. It, Got it's it. gaseous state, if you will. Okay. And then butane is at between 35 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So both of them are very unstable gases as far as when they turn from liquid to a gas. Okay, but if but let's say I have a can of butane right now. What if I sprayed it up my nose or something? Um, it would get to your lungs. I don't think it would kill you, though. You don't? No. And that is what we Not we're that I would recommend be. that. Well, Just no, want to throw that one out not. there. <laughs> yeah. This isn't jackass. <laughs> don't try this at home. But I'm just trying to get my head around it, and mainly for the people listening, because, you know, we hear so many things Um regarding butane, propane, you know, all of this kind of stuff that it's it's nice to get a, a good view from you who knows about those and CO2. So why don't you tell us, let's go over again the pros and cons of each. Okay. Um, starting with CO2. All right. So um, CO2, um, as we talked about earlier, which I didn't touch on this, um, I was talking about the extraction times of being two hours per pound. Right. So that's using a what's called a gas booster pump. And so that's taking gas and boosting the pressure and moving it through the system. Does that make sense? So you don't have a longer ra- ramp up time? Um, well, no, that's the standard method right now of, oh, okay. of a CO2 extractor is okay. using a gas booster pump. Right. So okay. um, Eden Labs has actually modified and come up with a new way to do it using a liquid booster pump. And so oh, what that does so gets quicker. is actually keeps it in the liquid state. Okay. And so that okay. there's not, it's not trying to make up liquid or gas into liquid in the extractor column so that it can actually move through the material as liquid and it, and it speeds up the extraction times by half. Okay. So do, do, do you understand that? Cause I'm, 
<laughs> Not a bit quite, that. but what Sorry. I do understand about CO2 extractors are that they are extremely cost prohibitive, and this is not something most people are going to be able to do at home. Is that correct? No. Oh, that's are correct. There sh- yes. Um, are there more reasonably priced CO2 extractors? And, I mean, the reason I ask is the majority of um, – patients that I worked with who were interested in oils are chemo patients, cancer patients, very, very ill patients who relied on oil. So what is their best option for their caregiver or somebody at home? I mean, good question. Um, the safest and best one would be ethanol. I'd be your Phoenix tears. I mean, that when you start the, the issues with going large scale on either gases with CO2 or, or hydrocarbons, um, what happens is it, it starts getting more costly because you've got to be more safe. CO2 dealing with pressure and then hydrocarbons dealing with flammability. So, uh, I mean, I, I sell a, uh, um, I have a company called Extraction Tech Solutions, and we sell a hydrocarbon extractor that holds two pounds or a kilo. And, uh, you know, it, its sales price is 18000 So it, that's not really cost effective for a patient. Um, it'd be cost effective if you were a caregiver and had multiple patients, but considering Colorado, we can only have five. I don't think it'd be cost effective then. So, uh, right. ethanol would probably be the Ag- most again, effective. Everclear. Sorry, Everclear. Right? Yeah. Now, now, <laughs> if you use the Everclear for a longer time, could you still get the cannabinoid count there? Because I think that for people at you know that are maybe treating themselves or somebody else you know, taste and all that probably comes later. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, I've seen high, high, I've seen up to 65% uh, percent on ethanol. Let's see. So, that's still great for, for somebody at home. That's fantastic. Right. And how much of it has to do though with the, the after processing, like how much of that ethanol or Everclear will evaporate all of it. Through, okay. And so the taste residual... Is the biomass is what you're tasting. It, it, the taste has nothing to do with the ethanol. It has to do with the other chlorophyll and, and biomass uh, um, plant waxes and stuff that, that you got with it. That's what's mm-hmm. not so tasty. Um, as far as when you smoke it, I mean, when you eat it, you're not really going to taste it too long. So, right. Like, couldn't you mix with honey or something? And Yes. Yeah. You can mix it with honey. I mean, you can also... Another another easy one that a lot of people don't or forget about is you can actually infuse um, um, cooking oil. So you can go get olive oil. That's and right. And infuse I olive oil. Forget I mean, about that or butter. Yeah, or glycerin. butter. Glycerin. Yeah. Uh, vegetable glycerin is a great option for people. Too. Coconut oil, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one of the things with vegetable glycerin though is it's not as it's not as the it's not the best solvent, if you right. will. Um, so what I would recommend is using an alcohol to extract the majority of it and then reintroducing that into the glycerin and you'll get more of effect, uh, as far as your tincture effect. Oh. And that way you can have the tincture without the alcohol with the glycerin. Right. Nice. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So yeah, cause I heard, um, can't you get like a bench model CO2 for five grand, if you will? But can somebody run that? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I haven't heard of that one yet. We'll have to, you haven't? Oh, no. Okay, maybe I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard wind of, of somebody making one, but never for oh, that. Oh, Not, not that ago. expensive. I thought Eden did a bench. No, not, not, not one that small. And it, uh, it wouldn't be that price. It'd probably be closer to uh, the price of my machine. Right. Or the 18000 18, okay. yeah. What about tenesium extractors? Tenesium, uh, um, he, uh, McGee, he's, it's, uh, I forgot his first name, but he's done very well. He's got some, uh, they're small extractors, Mm -hmm. um, and they're set up where they could run tanks or cans. Um, Again, we prefer tanks. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got a two ounce, no, a four ounce and an eight ounce machine. So what's different between your machine and his? Um, My capacity is much larger. He's also got a kilo machine, uh, which says holds a kilo kilo of uh, a kilogram of material, which is a thousand grams. Okay. Um, I haven't seen it run yet, uh, but I know his column, his extractor column, is only three liters, and I've never been able to put a kilo in three liters. Um, so about f- five liters uh, holds about a two pounds, two and a half pounds. And then you have a pump, correct? Correct. So is it quicker? And so uh, we, I can do extractions mean? in uh, in about an hour, an hour and fifteen minutes, depending on the solvent I'm using. Each solvent's got a little bit. 
right. intricacies to it. So have you been mixing the two then, the butane and propane? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I've been I've found real good results with, with mixed gases. It actually gives you the best of, best of both worlds. Okay, so what are so we talked about, you know, CO two is very expensive, it's safe, mm. uh, long run time. So tell me the obviously the disadvantages of butane and propane are you can blow yourself up and others. <laughs> what are the um, <clears throat> pros of those. And I don't mean to laugh about that because it's not a laughing manner. And we'll talk about that next. Um, so as far as um, my extraction equipment and the, the extraction equipment I've built, uh, we've actually gone through the process of getting an ETL listing. What so, does that mean? Um, so everybody's familiar with UL listing. It's underwriters laboratories. So they list everything. I mean, that laptop's got a listing. Um, this microphone's got a listing. Everything's got a listing. Okay. And so what it means is that it, it actually uh, complies with North American safety standards. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's a big it's a, deal. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it's, it is a big deal. And it was expensive. Expensive and painful. But uh, right. we're, we're almost through it as far as uh, we've got the, the extraction equipment done. The pump is the last thing that we're working on right now. And so we're going back and forth on on that one. And what's that listing again? Uh, ETL. ETL. Okay. And it's, it's similar to UL. It's, it's a, uh, it's another, um, underwriter laboratory that, that okay. tests for safety to standards. Test for safety standards. Well, that's great. Yay. Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> Yay for safety standards in this industry. Woohoo. So they tested our equipment, uh, pressure tested and such, and, and have found it to be safe. Um, and then, then, and in, then. yeah, Oh, we're getting, we're getting a break. So we'll be back in just a second. In Dispensary in Colorado Springs is proud to support Overgrow the Radio. With two locations in Colorado Springs, In Dispensary invites you to discover what true selection and values feel like. Always featuring an incredible array of Stanley Brothers medicine as well as full line of edible and infused products. In Dispensary is open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week, 364 days a year. You owe it to your health and well-being to discover In Dispensary. Westside location at 3044 West Colorado and Eastside location at 3031 East East Platte in Colorado Springs. Indispensary is your destination for indispensable quality medicine. Independent Records and Videos has been your locally owned and operated choice for music, movies, and lifestyle accessories since 1978. Independent Records and Videos has seven locations from Denver to Colorado Springs to Pueblo to serve your entertainment needs. Whether it's vinyl, CDs, DVDs, books, smoking accessories, or hundreds of other fun and fanciful items, Independent is ready and waiting to make your dreams come true. We are always buying, selling, and trading vinyl, CDs, books, and DVDs, so sell yours and buy ours. Independent Records and videos, your entertainment headquarters. Check us out at BeIndependent.com or on Facebook. Ivita Wellness is committed to compassionate patient care while providing the highest quality medicine at an affordable price. At Ivita Wellness, patients can get top shelf ounces for $150 every day. Ivita Wellness also carries pharmaceutical grade pure CO2 oil. Ivita Wellness is located in Uptown Denver on 1616 Pearl Street. Open seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can reach us at 303-952-9150 or our website at www.ivitawellness.com. Ivita Wellness is Denver's Compassionate Care Center. You're listening to iCannabisRadio.com. All right. So back to the ETL listing, Matt. Oh, so um, so we get our equipment or in the process of getting our equipment ETL listed. Okay. Um, and then uh, I've got a customer up in Boulder that uh, Boulder. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Boulder's <laughs> in, in their rules and regulations um, have decided that uh, they like the ETL listing, which that oh. covers the equipment. But then you also have the method, as you understand with your equipment. You have equipments and methods. So they are requiring an industrial hygienist. And so What is that? Yeah, I've never heard of this person until uh until I was asked about it. And I'm so basically they come in, it's a it's a lady in this case, that comes in and approves that what you're doing and how your instructions are is that they're safe. As far as and this is from and that not just the extractor running. But also making wax and oils and taking it down the step till you're n- no longer in uh, in danger of being introduced introduced to gas. So wow, how does she? Is it? How would you? I don't even know where to start there. <laughs> I've never even heard of such thing. So an industrial hygienist. Yep. 
And so I have not met with her, so I haven't gotten the full detail of what exactly she does, but I know that she certifies methods and, you know, running the extraction equipment, the instructions and the, and the, and all the, all the things that you do is considered the method. And she's going to make sure that, 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 Basically, you're safe in every step that you uh, take. Well, listen, that is great because as we know in Colorado, Boulder is is extremely hard to deal with. But you know what? I give props to Boulder because they they hit all the safety <laughs> and everything like that. And, uh, you know, nobody's going to hopefully blow themselves up in Boulder. So I give... I give props to Boulder, really, because this is very, I mean, I know I'm making light of the blow up thing, but this is not funny and people are dying uh, because of this. Jill, why don't you talk about that article you sent me? Well, we had, um, this was San Diego. Um, This happened January 30th. We had a gentleman and a woman deciding to stay in a hotel room to make hash not a good idea first of all to (laughs) do it in a hotel room absolutely not um james kraut 43 oh no he was a witness sorry no there's this was a 21 year old man who caused the blast uh along with a 20 year old woman where he was in the process of using a butane spray can to extract oil from hash they got that wrong Extract yeah. oil from cannabis. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> to make oil. And while the man was doing this, he lit a cigarette. Mistake oh, number one. Oh, wow. Right? So, yeah. So, that's he didn't blow himself up from improper use. He blew himself up because he wanted to smoke and didn't realize there were hydrocarbons in the air, evidently. That's correct. Well, wow. I would also say from my experience in hotel rooms, there's not much ventilation going on. Not there. at all. Oh, yeah. You're so, right. Because a lot of hotels, you can't even open the window, can you? And if you can, it's not going to be enough to create probably what you need at home for um, oh the proper ventilation. God. And most people I know who are using Vector at home are doing this outside. Sure. They are not doing this Correct. inside. Yeah. Um, sure. And so it is It is very dangerous. But I had a question. With 64 passing, are you looking at maybe making some smaller scale machines? Um, so the issue with a smaller scale machine is um, we use a pump, uh, and the pump is actually rated for hydrocarbons. Uh, we actually import it from England. Um, over in uh, over in Europe, they use hydrocarbons as refrigerants. So it's the only place we've ever been able to find a particular pump that was cost effective. So that pump right there is like twenty five hundred. Okay. So if you're trying to make a large sc- or a smaller scale machine. It's hard to do when the pieces that you would need are still rather expensive. Okay. Um, and then going from tanks, I mean, uh, just so you know, I mean, the smallest tank you can get is a 20-pound tank because gas is measured in weight. Mm-hmm. So a 20-pound tank of butane or propane is about $600. So it's that rather, last you a long time. Yeah, well, a long, for it, home use. I'm well, at a long time if you're doing it right. So it, that's if you recapture it. If you're not recapturing it, you can actually use it pretty quick. So that gets really? rather expensive. Yes, I mean my my okay. extractor runs. We run four and a half pounds of gas through the extractor for five liters, and so we recover all that. So it doesn't the cost savings is there. Um, but if you if you were trying to blow tubes. Um, as we talked about, instead of using cans, using tanks, because when you blow it through there, you're, it's going to waste. It's going to air, uh, all, doing it outside, of course. Right. Um, and so that's a very expensive. You probably run, I would say, at least a pound, maybe a pound and a half of gas through a tube. And that's very costly. That is costly. So really, somebody needs to come up with uh, an extraction method for small-scale for people at home that maybe want to do their own if they didn't want to do ethanol. But like you said, I mean, that's pretty much cost effective, Correct. the ethanol. Yeah. So, Well, and we see in the dispensary industry, we see firms that um, have have come up to do processing for people, and hopefully we'll see that happen. Oh, that's a good point, too. 64 as well is yeah. that there's access to patients and adult use users to bring in their own product oh, that's for a great processing. Idea. Yeah, so that's a great we're idea. We're going to see so many amazing things happen. So. I know. I keep forgetting 64, so that's going to bring... That's definitely going to help out. I know that I have a lot uh, more people uh, bringing samples in. I do. Um, that aren't red card holders, that... That do uh, that have been growing at home since the past. <laughs> um, I have a question that actually kind of 
is off topic, but I've been wondering about, and that's terpenes. And are terpenes concentrated when you're doing extraction? So the when I am um, using a hash that I really, really like, it, it has a tendency to make my eyes water, tingle my nose. And mm-hmm. I'm wondering if that, what that has to do with terp- terpenes and if they stay through the extraction method. And if one method is better than others to capture that flavor, which I think we already said CO2, but do you know what happens with the terpenes? No, actually CO2 is not the best for terpenes. Um, uh, the, the goal is to try to get the terpenes to stay on CO2. That's why that low pressure or subcritical CO2 works because okay. it, it actually retains the terpenes. Uh, but believe it or not, the best thing I've seen for terpenes so far is pure propane. Um, I've hmm. been able to actually keep some of the best aromas and smells in there. Uh, now, granted, here in Colorado, we don't have anybody that currently tests for terpenes. Right. That's something we're we're trying to work Why is on. Why everyone looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> You're a best hope. It's coming. It's coming. Um, but uh, one of the, the it's funny that you talk about terpenes. I, I also have another company that does uh, formulations and lab work, and uh, and and consulting. And one of the projects I'm working on is I'm actually taking isolated terpenes. I've got them in the isolated forms, and then reconfiguring those terpenes into the flavors and smells that you're used to. Perfume. Uh, well, I mean, not necessarily perfume, additive to food, too. I mean, some people, when you go and try to get the purest oil and clean it up, there's no terpenes left. Terpenes are volatile between about 100, 100 degrees F and, and 125 degrees F. So anything over that, and they're pretty much gone bye-bye. So it's hard mm-hmm. to get the pure isolated form of THC and still have a good flavor. Hmm. Yeah, so that's interesting. So we have one extraction method that's good at X, one extra or solvent, sorry, mm-hmm. one solvent that's good. At, so I could see where a combination would. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, that CO2 machines can do butane and propane. Correct. But not the opposite. Correct. Because yes. uh, so CO2 operates between 800 to 5,000 psi. Okay. Uh, and so that's that's a lot of pressure. I mean that's. Um, I don't have anything that would actually correlate to that, but that's it's a lot. Let's put it that way. Um, bu- uh, propane's got the highest bottle pressure, and that runs at about 110 psi. So my extraction machines are rated for 400, and they're, they're pressure tested uh, above 300 psi because the okay. propane would never get that high. So I couldn't oh, run okay. propane that's – or I couldn't run CO2 that's a higher pressure in my machine. But since the CO2 machine is rated for – Got it. 1,500 to 5,000, I can run hydrocarbons in that. Got it. Okay. And, um, that makes sense. Yeah. So you it take, you can get the best of both worlds uh, on w- with the CO2 extractor. Uh, hmm. but with that being said, uh, CO2 extractors are between 50 and 125,000. Right. So. Right. Um, well, talk about uh, extraction tech again and why you decided to start uh, making extraction. Well, um, I actually... I actually didn't start off wanting to build extraction equipment. I had a f- good friend of mine um, that uh, was doing some work in his house, and uh, he slipped up and ignited. Um, he, he was blowing tubes and ignited uh, the fumes, and he was able to get out. He didn't get hurt, uh, but then it, it, it took up a case. So the case got ignited, and the house was no more. Oh, my. Was that here? Uh, no, that was no. actually up in Washington. Okay. And so um, it was a good friend of mine, and I wanted to work with him. So he was the reason I decided to build an extraction machine. Well, that's and then awesome. I had another good friend of mine, Marcus, which is my partner, Extraction Tech, mm-hmm. said, hey, you know what? We could sell these. real nice. And so I was like, well, you know, man, I got so much going on. If you help me out, we can do it. <laughs> so, um, and Marcus knows his, his <laughs> stuff, too. And it was actually a good marriage, too, because Marcus yeah. has been in the HVAC industry for 14 right. years. And so a lot of the gases and changing from liquid and stuff is, happens with the Freon in your air conditioners. Right. So uh, he's been very good, and we've done, we've done rather well. We sold 16 units last year. Wow. Uh, what, when I, did you start selling? Uh, well, we started at the first of the year, January of last year. January of last year. Yeah. Okay. And um, and we sold 16 units last year, and this month alone we've sold five. Oh my God, fantastic! So, well, what's your website, and how do people get a hold of you? Um, 
My website is extractiontech.com, but it doesn't exist right now. Oh, sorry. Because <laughs> you have so much time to build it. Exactly. But, but that is actually this weekend. We worked on uh, video for commercials in, uh, in the extraction manual, if you will. So we have a video of an extraction. Oh, that's good. So uh, that was the last thing I needed to get the website going. So now okay. I'm going to talk with the web developer and get that up, hopefully in the next okay. 30 days. And then we'll have a link actually from Can Labs that will go to Extraction Tech. Well, what about how do we get a hold of you, Matt? Um, right now, uh, you can <laughs> <laughs> not right this second. What um, is your phone number or email? Whatever um, you can email best. any inquiries to uh, info at extractiontech.com. and okay. that's T E K. So it's extraction T E K dot com. Now you also do consulting um, on a number of things, and we'll talk about that when we come back. Dixie Elixirs, the patient's choice for alternative medical marijuana treatment, brings you Dixie Botanical's all-natural topical therapy, including massage oil, pain relief salve, and our newest product, Dixie Botanical's Pain Relief Lotion. This all-natural lotion pairs beautifully with Dixie Botanical's bath salt for a deeply relaxing experience with no psychotropic effect. Like us on Facebook, Dixie Elixirs, or join us at www.dixieelixirs.com. Blue Sage Microbes unveils the ultimate in superior soil, Ideal Soil, a 16-quart bag of the best growing soil ever engineered. Superior plant health and vitality is a direct result of the structure and chemistry of your soil. How good is your growing soil? Is your growing soil really balanced? How do you know? Well, Blue Sage Microbes has a newly designed growing soil that is the most advanced growing medium ever offered for cannabis cultivation. This is the only brand in the marketplace that provides growers with an ideal soil structure designed to work specifically with their cultivation systems. You will have your best grow results ever. Call now for a special introductory offer, 888 959 8 Five five one, or log on to bluesagemicrobes.com and experience a new level in growing. That's 888-959-8551. All right. So again, um, I want you to talk about... Uh, your consulting and what kind of consulting you do. Um, because I get a ton of calls to can labs asking obviously for expertise on extraction. And I always, um, pretty much send everyone to you. So tell me what you do, you know, all those great things. Um, well, one of the things, uh, there's, there's two main questions that they get asked, uh, on how to, what to do with cannabis. In far as how to put it into products, you got emulsification. So emulsification is basically making the oil mixed with water in a good basis, <laughs> uh, which is very hard to do um, because, as we know, oil doesn't mix with water. Right. So there's uh, some other uh, emulsifiers out there that will help in different techniques. Okay. Um, so that's one of the first big questions. The second okay. question is how do I get my oil to be as pure as possible? And so there's a technique called winterization, and that's basically taking the – oils in the waxes so the plant waxes mm -hmm. that come from the plant and separating okay so uh, first got to understand that in a plant you have absolutes which is the essential oil mm -hmm. you have concretes which is an oil and, and, and wax mixture and you have plant waxes so those are the three mm. components of a, of a plant okay um a plant extract if you will like rose uh so absolute rose oil is very expensive because it's been refined oh, okay. it also takes like two tons of roses for one ounce oh my god yeah it's ridiculous the amount of roses that it takes to, to make oil wow um, i'll just take a rose the, uh, so in getting those things out, so the waxes are uh, basically cellulose material and biomass, and you don't want, you don't necessarily want that. It doesn't mix well with other things. So okay. when you when you take and you take a, a more cleaner and pure oil, it's easier to work with it to mix into. Totally stuff. for flavors yeah. and and everything like that. Well, I can attest that you do amazing. Well, you do amazing oil, but you do amazing cleanup, and I've seen before, during, after. Do you want to share some of your test results at all? Or I didn't know if you wanted to, but um, I've seen some amazing stuff come from you, and 
I would recommend Matt to any business that wants to to learn any of the cleanup or create some more products maybe with uh, cleaning up your oil. But do you want to talk about any of your um, I mean, stuff? Uh, I'm trying to think of test results. Didn't you have? I, I think you had the highest clean oil over 90 percent didn't you oh yes i mean the cleanest yeah. i've ever remember getting was like 94 95 94 95 and again i mean again high thc is not always the goal here Correct. um again it's getting that to right the viscosity but or, i guess what well, i guess you have to uh we'd have to talk about percentages okay by volume so 94 okay. percent thc just right. means that that that's 94% by volume in there. So the only thing you have left would be, um, yeah, so it's 940 milligrams per gram of material. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. Quite, that's quite a bit. That's and so crazy. That means that you don't have a lot of other room of stuff. Other stuff, right. Yeah, so if you've got, if say, say if your extract was 50% THC and 2% CBD, then that makes 52% um, – you know, active material, and then the other 48%, there we go. Yeah, yeah there we go. 48% trash or cellulose material, whatever. Or Not necessarily you know. trash. I don't right. mean to yeah. say that or something we couldn't necessarily test for. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, it's not, it, it's more pure in what you're trying and what you're looking for. Sure. Yeah. Well, because, in, and again, I don't make extractions. I never have. I don't grow. Um, I'm, I'm strictly on the testing side of it. But I have seen, like, viscous, compl- vis- viscous, right, thick yeah. oil, like yeah. syrup. I've seen it like water. I've seen powder. I've seen wax, shatter. I mean, all of that stuff. Is that the cleanup? Does that have anything to do with the solvent you use? Well, it's actually funny that you say that. So you've got different uh, – there's actually many, many parameters that make that go into the color. Um, you, between solvents um, – well, let's start with the first part, is, is how mature the trim is. So the more mature the trim is uh, – Meaning the far, longer the cure? Uh, the longer the cure oh, – sorry, the freshness. The freshness of the trim. Freshness, sorry. okay. Um, now, I don't mean fresh wet. I mean fresh dry. I was going to say, will know this. Yeah. what about – Fresh frozen, and is that a good way to keep it and then dry it before the process? You know what? I've actually I had somebody the other day ask me that question and told me that they actually did that, and I have got to do some testing on that because yeah. there's some new things that. The issue with using hydrocarbons and CO2 is because they're coming, they're cold, so they're very uh, they can freeze moisture. And my thought was always that if it was wet, the moisture would freeze and you wouldn't be able to get the trichomes. Um, and so I'm mm-hmm. hearing some some differences of opinion of, of stuff that's been done. So I'm uh, maybe that for be for another show. Yeah, I'm gonna, great. I'm going to test that. Theory. That'd be yeah. cool because I know that um, another extract artist who does just um, solventless, uh, Nick a T, he does, uh, I think, flash uh, frozen trim. Like that's what he prefers for that. So right. I guess that that's makes sense, what right? we used when we were doing bubble, which is just water, right. which okay. would make sense. So we, I mean, doing okay. bubble, um, and so bubble bags, I don't know if everybody's familiar with that. You basically mm-hmm. get a different filtration, micron filtration, multiple bags, dump so it in ice water. So squeezing it through a filter, Squeezing it through a filter, okay. basically. Right. Um, so the reason you do it frozen, uh, fresh frozen or wet frozen, uh, the chlorophyll doesn't break down when it's frozen. Uh, and then the trichromes are rigid at that point. So the oscillation of the water can actually fracture them off and be recovered uh, via the, the backs. And so that's ah. what makes it. Yeah, it, there's there's no really other better way to do bubble bag than fresh frozen. Um, but I've been told that you can do butane fresh frozen so that's the that's what i'm going to determine there let's let's do some testing and then um have you back on because that's that's pretty uh, pretty awesome and there's so much we don't know and matt i mean when i met you whatever three years ago (laughs) a lot of things changed since then yes i mean i remember coming to pick up samples from matt and he had his own little lab there. He had his, you know, the flavors and smell this and taste this. And and it was so exciting. I really, I love the product development side um, of it. Have you enjoyed it? Um, yes. I, I tell people jokingly that I can put cannabis in anything. You can, though. Yeah, I, I pretty much can. You really can. Um, the emulsification, I know, has been really popular as well. 
because Correct. yeah, there's a lot of things that. Um, you know, I haven't seen cannabis water. Do, 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 do. You, uh, I know. So the <laughs> it, it, the cool thing is that it can be done. It can be done. It can be done. Okay. You can make cannabis water. And you can water. take the, the taste out? Or? You can make a water-soluble cannabis. Uh, the issue with that is the fact that it requires a full lab, a full um, – not, not, not I'm going to go get a kitchen and I'm going to put some tables and some beakers in. I mean, this requires a full lab in order to do this. We're, we're doing uh, um, um, cellular manipulation and, and, oh, wow. and, and actually reconstructing how the THC works. Oh, so wow. that it becomes more hydrophilic, which means it's attracted to water. So I have not done it yet. I understand how to do it, but the problem is, is in order to do it, you, it's it's not uh, it's not as easy as baking a muffin. I promise you. <laughs> well, so anybody out there that wants to invest a lot of money to have Matt <laughs> make us some cannabis water, please. Um, but it, as, as soon as I get it done, I will definitely uh, bring you some uh, samples. Now, with emulsifiers, I've been able to get it close, um, being really? uh, the ability. So emulsifier, what it does, uh, uh, example is an egg. An egg is an emulsifier in baking. It actually right. bonds okay. things together. Right. So um, an emulsifier that you see in most drinks and stuff like that, you have your polysorbates, 20 and 80. Oh, okay. So and that's so, why they're in there. Okay. Yeah. So the polysorbates actually help bind um, – um, Lipophilic, which means oil-based um, compounds to hydrophilic. So it allows you to okay. basically bind them together. And so like uh, the amount of oil or the amount of water that cannabis oil can actually hold is 0.05% without an emulsifier. And it will actually hold that without separation. Really? Uh, that, yeah, that's actually a calculation somewhere I read. And, and from a, from a reputable source, I promise. I know. And remember. <laughs> no, looked up, learned, and remember. Yeah. So it, it, it can hold some, just not much. And right. that's one of the things with CO2. So CO2 uh, in the extraction process loves water. It's actually very attracted to water. So if you ever get CO2 oil that crackles and pops, that's moisture being released from the oil. Oh, okay, because okay. I've heard, oh, my God, some yeah, things I know. in there. Uh, trust me. Uh, it's what I did at Organolabs, and then Evo Labs went through the same thing. It's it's just moisture. It's moisture okay. that's being released. So if you have CO2 oil and it's got some crackling, that's yeah. just moisture. Great. That's just moisture. That's awesome. And so, and, and there's process you can do to remove the moisture. Um, so, it, But it, it's normal. There's no residual anything in it. I mean, CO2 is, is yet another gaseous at room temperature, so that's not going to stay in there. All right. Um. So where were we at? We, we were actually we got off on a tangent on that one. Uh, Jill, we were talking about emulsifiers, <laughs> but we're we're we've got a couple minutes left, so we might want to okay get on to something else. What would you like to talk about, Jill? I don't know. I asked my terpene <laughs> question. That was the only question I came. Well, I, I do have two things I wanted to touch on. Yeah, please do. So um, no, so there there's two things that I've uh, questions have been asked as far as butane. Okay. Uh, so butane and benzene rings. Uh, I wish I had my buddy here. He gets all fired up over this question. Okay. Now benzene rings ca- or benzene it causes cancer. Correct. correct? Benzene is okay. a carcinogen. Okay? okay. And so benzene rings are a um, a bi- or a um, what's it, a waste product of the petroleum industry. Okay. So basically, when they take petroleum and they fracture it to get your different gases, your, and your hydrogen, your, your, your carbons, hydrocarbons. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, they, uh, you, you, with a catalyst, you can actually make the carbon rings. In, and again, what's a catalyst? <laughs> a catalyst is like a, a strong acid, acetic anhydride, acetic acid. Something that helps acid. evolve the, the, the chemical. Yes, um, it, it, it's actually, so if you, have, uh, if you have two atoms, in right. order to get the atoms to do anything, you got to really excite them. And so okay, right. you have to have some sort of um, something to excite, and that's a acid. catalyst. An acid, um, acetic okay, acid. Okay, remember that, guys, for Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have a catalyst that helps it along. Correct, right? and then okay. you would have to have unique conditions, meaning pressure and temperature. Okay. So in order for butane or propane to ever form benzene rings, you would have to have extreme amount of pressure, an extreme amount of heat, and we're, and we're as far as extreme, we're talking over five, six hundred degrees, and pressures two, three thousand. Okay, so uh, and, and then and then acid poured that. in that bottle. Also. Oh my god! So, so it's never going to happen. That. Okay, because <laughs> I've heard that too. Um, that oh my god, maybe they form benzene rings. I don't know, but so I mean, unless what you're telling me is unless 
you know, a perfect storm happens, yeah. that's not happening. And yeah. and there's there's some there's some really creative people in the world because I've seen a lot of creative things, but I'm sure. I've never seen anybody quite pull that one off. Okay. So uh, so the world, you're you're pretty safe when it comes to any uh, any any benzene rings. I promise. Uh, and then the other one was ethanol and butane. Uh, this was new to me. Uh, so if you take ethanol vapor, okay. So ethanol, uh, which is Everclear. ever clear. Uh, in a in a in a gaseous state, and you take butane in a gaseous state, and you mix them together. There was uh, it, it, somebody said that it would make a poisonous gas, and so <laughs> okay. that's not going to happen either. Okay. So you would have to have the same thing. You would have to have the pressure, the temperature, and a catalyst being an acid hmm. in order to make an ester. And an ester is just a modification of the two. Got two, it. Two molecules, no, if you will. So. It's that's pretty safe is the point No, I'm and that's good information because right now they're just, um, you know, there's there's not a lot known. And I know that CAN Labs will soon be offering residual solvent testing. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks that will test for those propane, butane, et cetera. So if you're a patient or a dispensary grower and you want to get some of your hash tested to get a quantifiable number to see if you have some residual solvents, uh, look for that uh, coming soon at Can Labs, but I also wanted to to say that you know we've got to be we've got to be careful because of course you have people that want to say butane's bad, correct? And there's only certain ways and that kind of thing. I just want to get to the bottom of what's safe. Uh, what is safe for the consumer? And safe has to do with practices. Um, so here's some homework for everybody. Go look up how. Uh, soybean oil is made. Soybean and oil. Soybean oil or or peanut oil, the oil that we uh, that we use to cook with. So they use hexane, and hexane's a really nasty one. Yes, it but is. But they, they they extract it with hexane and then further process all of it out so that it's safe. Got and it. so the stuff that we use may not be safe, but as long as we take it all out, it is. Which we know is not happening. So that's that's the point I'm making here is let's not make butane you know, the, the bad guy, let's exactly. make the person who's making it with the butane, the yep. bad guy. And, uh, it's just very if important they're doing it wrong. if they're doing it wrong. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> if they're doing it wrong. Um, and I would, uh, uh, just say that if you, uh, don't know or have any questions, you know, you can always email me Jennifer G E N I F E R at can labs.com. Um, if you, you know, are looking for to get some of your oil processed or if you have questions. And then um, I always pass people on to the right people because, of course, I don't I don't know anything about that. And that's why we've had you in because you are the expert. Well, I, Jill, I, I do what I can. Got any other questions for, for Matt? We're out of time. Right. <laughs> I think he needs to come back next month. He will definitely come back. And listen, if you have any more questions for Matt, just email me at, again, jennifer at canlabs.com, and I can pass those on to him and get you some follow-up answers next week. And then I will we'll see everyone next week um, for In the Lab with Jennifer. Thank you.